Lately, I've been playing the entire game of Pokemon Scarlet, including the DLCs, using only shiny Pokemon. And this is the entire movie of my adventure in Paldea. This is the whole of Pokemon Scarlet, but I can only use shiny Pokemon. Our journey begins with the making of our character. I made her look as shiny as possible, called her proper, and started the game. Now that we were created, of course, the first thing we do with our life is join school. We were enrolled to an Aranger Academy. We see all the different classes, which I'm totally gonna attend. We see some major characters we will meet throughout the story and then a dragon escapes. I don't blame him. I wouldn't want to be in school either. We see our house for the first time and enter our bedroom. We head downstairs to be introduced to our MILF, I mean mother, and then there's a ring at the door. The guy who enters is the director of the academy. My mum tells me to conveniently head upstairs to grab my stuff so she can have a cuppa with him. More like a cuppa of these nuts. We grab our stuff and head outside to be introduced to the starter Pokemon of this region. Weedcat, Donald Duck, and Moron. We get given the latest iPhone and travel down the path with the three starter Pokemon following us. After a cute little cutscene of the starter showing off, we meet Nimona for the first time before getting to choose our starter Pokemon. Now because this is a shiny only playthrough, we will only be using this starter Pokemon for the very first battle of the game, as we are locked into this area until after the first battle. We chose the moron and named him Steve. Then we headed to the beach to battle Barcelona, beat her, and went to the front gate to find our mother. She gave us a sandwich and then we never saw her ever again, just like my own mother. We go to Poco Path and Corona teaches us how to capture Pokemon, and then then we were finally free to shiny hunt our very first Pokemon. The first method that I'll introduce is simply called Full Odds. A shiny Pokemon has a 1 in 4096 chance to be shiny in the overworld. These are the base odds in the game, and seeing as though right now we don't have any other methods to help us out, we will be running around this area until we find our first shiny Pokemon. Now Pokemon Scarlet is like every good traditional Pokemon game where you can get up to 8 gym badges. Unless you don't have gyms. <coughs> Gen 7. <coughs> but there are extra badges we can get throughout the story, as this this game has a total of three separate storylines, so my goal is to find a shiny Pokemon for each badge in the game. That's a total of 18 badges, which means 18 shiny Pokemon, so let's get started. Well, we would get started, but I was running around the area and I accidentally triggered this cutscene to the next part of the story. So it looks like we're locked into doing this beforehand, and like a dumbass, I still had auto save on, so no going back. We look over the cliff to see two hound dogs barking at the dragon that escaped at the start of the game. We fall down the cliff, but are saved by the Rotom form. Turns out there's an app for that. We head over to the dragon. So what do we do? Call the police that a potentially legendary dragon is on the beach? Call upon some stronger trainers to come tame it so it's safe to travel on the beach? No, we feed it the sandwich our mother gave us. Surprise it didn't bite our arm off at the same time. It loves the sandwich and it also gets a huge power boost from it which allows us to see its battle form. It looks like a dragon had sex with a Hot Wheels car to make this thing. Now that it was powered up we followed it through a cave. As we enter we hear a shake from above and it turns out to be Daytona. She tells us to travel up the cave towards her, but as we travel through, we get ambushed by some dogs. We try to fight the big dog with Steve, but the dragon steps in and saves us. And at an amazing 15 FPS, it jumps up the cave to drop us off next to Oklahoma. Then it powers down and falls to the ground. We exchange phone numbers with Coca-Cola, and then we head off to finally shiny hunt. So, 1 in 4096 odds to find a shiny Pokemon. Luckily, because this is an open world Pokemon game, you can see a whole lot more spawns compared to older Pokemon games. We can only get one encounter in the grass at a time, so it should only take us about 30 minutes to find a shiny Pokemon, right? Five hours later, we find our first shiny Pokemon. Oh! 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 Yay! Yes! Shiny Tarantula, dude! Let's go! I'm five hours on the dot. Oh my god. The first one's here, guys. We got it! Boom! Spoodman! Spoodman is here! That's what you have to call him. Yes! But Spooder. Spooder. M-U-N. Spoodman. <laughs> He's Spoodman. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's such a nice one for the first one as well. I love him. <laughs> Spoodman. Spoodman. <laughs> so, our first shiny Pokemon was a Tarantula, which we named Spoodman. One of the best shinies we could find on Poco Path for sure. So we put Steve away and our shiny only playthrough had officially begun. We then travelled up towards a lighthouse at the top of Poco Path. Here we are introduced to Arvin. Arvin notices the dragon and tells us that its name is Coridon. And then to test if we are worthy enough to control this legendary Pokemon, Arvin battles us with his level 5 squirrel. Yeah, good one Arvin. Oh, wait, we actually lost. <laughs> <laughs> Spoderman, no! <laughs> Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. 
So even though we lost, Arvin lets us keep Coridon anyway. We go off to level up Spooderman to level 6 to make sure he can actually do something with his life. And then we head up the lighthouse so that Home Alona can show us the way to school. So we started to make our way to the school, battling other trainers and wild Pokemon on the way. So our next battle, we would be ready. But again, I accidentally triggered a story event against Ramona. Alright, you have this Scatterbug. There's no way you... I'm, I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I didn't go anywhere near that door. It was the skid that she did when I was sending him out. I don't, Nimona, I'm not ready. Nimona, I'm really not ready. You don't understand. You actually, you don't understand right now where I'm at. No, not right now. What'd you, I said not right now. Nimona, please consent. I, I did not want this. I'm not ready. Oh no. She shows off to Wrestleization for the first time, and we get our butts whooped. Spooderman really needs to start pulling his way, otherwise this playthrough is not gonna end well. She takes us through the giant doors, and I immediately leave. You might be ready for this, Fiona, but I've got some more leveling up to do with Spooderman here. We finally level up, and then we head back to the steps, where we find a girl being bullied by two grunts. So, we step in with our now ready Spooderman, and take them out. After the first grunt battle, Google Chroma gives us the Terror Orb, which means we can now Terrestrialize our own Pokemon. We beat the second grunt and the girl who we helped ran off. After entering the school we run into the director who tells us that the girl we met is called Penny. We warned him that Team Star were hanging around and headed off to our first class. This must be a maths class because it looks like half the students are running at a fraction of the frames that they should be. Moving on we unlock two of the three different stories this game has to offer. Victory Road which has us fight all eight gym leaders and Path of Legends which will have us help Arvin find all the different kinds of Herba Mystica. Clavel then finds us and asks us to come to his office where we are introduced to Professor Mummy Sada, who needs our help with looking after Coridon. We then head to bed to dream about Mummy Sada, time starts to move again, and then we set off on our adventure. As we are heading to the middle of the town, the final story is unlocked, Starfall Street, which will have us find and defeat the five team star bases located around the map. Just before we leave, Coridon pops out of its Pokeball, and we can now ride it around in the overworld. So, off we go to get our very first gym badge. Now, since the game's release, the community have created a map which shows the best order to finish the game in. This will help with level scaling and be the most fun way to finish the game. So the first badge we need to go to is the bug badge. Speaking of bugs, we need to make Spooderman stronger. So before heading off to the first badge, we do some training and finally evolve Spooderman. Yes, Spooderman is evolving. That's a nice pink. That's a very nice pink. So now that Spooderman had evolved, it was time to take on the first gym test. Each gym in this game requires you to complete a task before you are worthy to battle the gym leader. All right, that sounds great. So what am I proving? My strength as a trainer, my knowledge within the Pokemon world, is that a fucking olive? So we pushed the olive to the very end and then went to take on the gym leader, Katie. Her final Pokemon was a Terrorbug Teddy Ursa. Now luckily for me, I had a trick up my sleeve. Items. We used an X attack and defense and almost died. Healed up and took out the Bugbear and obtained our very first badge in our shiny playthrough. Nice! It was time for our second shiny hunt, and I wanted to go for my most favourite shiny from Scarlet and Violet, Cloth. I knew exactly where it spawned, I just needed a full odds one. So, time to put five more hours into another shiny hunt, right? I thought that was a shiny Nackley for a second. Wait, is that a shiny Nackley? That's a shiny Nackley! <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what? We got Minecraft. I said I was gonna get an Atclay. That was so fast. For full odds? Dude. That is fast. Oh my god, I'm gonna have to make sure I survive here. Oh no. Um, I use my Ultra Ball, I guess. That's crazy fast, I can't get over that. Let's go! Second shiny done, we can move straight onto the Titan. Yeah, was it a girl? Can I call it Alex? So, it wasn't Cloth, but I will take a full odd shiny Pokemon in less than 30 minutes. And that's crazy. Speaking of Cloth, he was the next task we had to do. So, we ran off to go defeat the Titan Cloth. With Terrorbug Spooderman, the first phase was easily done. Arvin came along to help us with the second phase of the fight after Cloth munched some Herba Mystica and became huge. We defeated the Cloth and Arvin took us inside the cave where we found the first Herba Mystica. He made us a banging sandwich which Coridon stole and ate, and it must have given him the zoomies because now he has the ability to dash. We left the cave by 
but Arvin stayed behind. Very sus. But we had no time to think about it. It was time for our next shiny hunt. Now that we had a couple of badges, we were able to make some sandwiches, which helped boost certain effects. The main one of these effects we were after was the encounter power. If there was a certain shiny Pokemon I wanted to go for, I could use an encounter power sandwich to boost that type of Pokemon. It doesn't change the odds at all, it just makes it more likely to see that type of Pokemon. So it was time to make our first sandwich, but funny story. Uh, it'd be really nice if I got my, uh, you know, my picnic table. It'd be really nice if uh, the game had given me my picnic table. Hello? Uh, am I going crazy or am I not doing a picnic right now? Am I going crazy or do you have to unlock the table? No, Nackley wants to talk to me. Do I have to... Do you have to chat to someone who's got a picnic table already? Nope, nope. It's just, it's just an invisible table. It's just an invisible table. Okay, here we go. In Kenner Power Fire, that's perfect. And I have what I need for it. All right. Um, how's this gonna look? There goes the bread. <laughs> what is going on? What? <laughs> How do I make this? Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, just drop them down. Do I just put the bread on? The bread fell so fast. Put my flag on. Did did I? Did I make it? <laughs> what is going on? Uh, well, there's all the ingredients. What? Hello, Speederman. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a pretty good sandwich for not being able to see anything. That was a pretty good sandwich. Yeah, it turns out there was a bug when the DLC came out, which sometimes makes it impossible to see the picnic table. But I was still able to make the sandwich I wanted, and off we went to do our next shiny hunt. Now, the area just outside of the next badge had Oricorio, as you can find. And I love the shiny colour of the fire form, so that was my next shiny target. Oh, shiny Lily! Oh, let's go! Full of shiny little oh, I guess we had the sandwich to help us, but yes, there is our next team member. Oh, it's a female as well. Sadapi! <laughs> yes! Nice! Let's go! I'm full on calling it Sarabi. No, you stay in the ball, lion. You stay in the ball. Noble raw, what does that do? Puts my attack down. I got scared because I saw raw and I thought it was gonna run away. <laughs> Boom! Shiny lion. Yes! Alright. We know what we're naming it. We know what we are naming it. Again, not the shiny I was after, but I will happily take a shiny Litlio. We named it after Simba's mum from The Lion King and then went on to start the next gym test. For this gym test, we had to play a hide and seek with a bunch of Sunflora. And after we find one, it will join us to help look for the others. Let's go, boys. Can I recreate the uh, the <laughs> the fight in Endgame with the Sunflowers? That's And this starts to destroy the FPS in the game. I mean, seriously, the Mona Lisa had more frames than this. But we finally got them all, and it was time for the gym. We showed up just in time for the latest episode of Jackass. <laughs> My name is Brassy Ass, and welcome to Jackass. <laughs> Now good for us, our latest shiny is a fire type, so we got through his mons quite easily. But then came Truly Wudo. But with Sarabi, we had a strat. Sarabi had two moves, Noble Raw and Work Up. Work Up increases your attack and special attack, and Noble Raw lowers the enemy's attack and special attack. So we buffed ourselves up and we can truly Wudo and took it out. We got the grass badge, Gracias Brassias, which is funny because that's the type of Pokemon you use and the level of trainer that you are. So we moved on to our next shiny hunt. Made a ground type sandwich as this area had fampies and mud braids we could find. But because of my luck. Yo, have you not found a shiny yet? Sorry, wh what have you found lately? <laughs> <laughs> No, dude! Dude! I just found a dupe! No! no, God, no. <laughs> it's a dupe shiny! No way! Cool, why did you have to say something? <laughs> there is actually no way, dude. Oh my god. I summoned it! There's no way! Out of everything, we've had grain sandwiches going for mud braids and fampies, and I somehow find another Natkley. Um, I don't know what we do in this situation, because no, I don't know. Why don't, I don't you, know. why don't you 
why don't you catch it and then go do that Makuhita outbreak? So we named it after a female villager from Minecraft. Female villager? Okay, shall we just call it? Ha. <laughs> Now my chat at the time agreed that with it being a dupe shiny Pokemon, I needed a unique shiny Pokemon to continue. So we did exactly what Cole suggested. There was a Makuhita outbreak on the map, so we went to hunt it. Now outbreaks are a different kind of shiny hunting method. There's an outbreak of Pokemon, and for a certain amount you defeat, the shiny odds of that outbreak will actually get better. For example, if we knock out 60 Makuhitas, our shiny odds will become 1 in 1365. So that's what we did. After many hours of me and Cole chilling and chatting, Cole had to leave. So I got Michael in on the call and Cole must have been the bad luck charm because as soon as Michael joined, because <laughs> Cole, me, right? so <laughs> we're watching loads of old videos last night and Cole logged into his super old YouTube. Oh, yes. One sec. I just found shiny Cartman. Let's go. <laughs> bad man. Let's go. He's finally here. Oh my God. That took so freaking long, dude, for an outbreak. Let's go! There it is! The next shiny! Oh man, we were, we were around that outbreak for so long. I love how we get it as Cole leaves, but Michael joins. <laughs> yep. It's the good luck charm. Yeah. It's like, we can't be in the same room. No, you just Me can't. because we're the same person. <laughs> Shiny Cartman was ours. Our team was filling up nicely, and the next badge on our list was another Titan fight with Arvin. So, we travelled up a mountain to find a big-ass bird. We used our strat of Noble Raw and work up with Sarabi, and defeated the bird with ease. Arvin made us another sandwich, which now lets on swim. And now it was time to hear Arvin's backstory about how he was tracking down the Herb and Mystica to help heal his old doggo. But I still had Michael in the call, and we were not giving Arvin the attention he deserves. How did I travel across the water? Can you eat? <laughs> <laughs> he finished the picture. He drew it. We can travel across water now. Can you eat? <laughs> <laughs> he, he ripped his trousers. He sew it. <laughs> I'm listening to the story about this dead dog in your chest. <laughs> so after defeating a giant bird, I wanted a bird shiny myself. And who better to go for than my main man, Carl the Psyduck. We found a nice little area which had a ton of awesome Pokemon, including Psyduck. I always hear that I never finished off the briefcase. After getting the three Starlies, I let them defeat me. After running around the area for a long time, I was about to end hunting for the day when I noticed something. It was super funny when it happened. Oh god. Oh no, the Starlies. Where? Oh my god. Oh my god. I saw it fly off and I was like, hang on a second. Are you freaking kidding me? It's not, is it? Yeah, it's shiny. <laughs> After everything we were saying. He's burp. Are you freaking every time it follows me? Maybe that's a sign for when I do BDSP. Maybe that is a sign. Oh, I'm gonna have to find where I was talking about it now earlier on. That wasn't even that long ago. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh my god. Just as I'm about to come off as well, the start, he was like, nah. <laughs> nah, you ain't yet. What the? Oh, I don't believe it. All right, I'm gonna call it bored. <laughs> Well, it's a shiny bird, so I can't complain, but why is it always Starly? Maybe I am destined to be a bird keeper. Anyway, now that we had another shiny, we can move on to the next badge. Now, the next badge we needed was from our first team star base. So, to make sure I was prepared, I spent some time changing up some moves on the team and leveling up Bored until it evolved. Here do we go. Get rid of little Starly as fast as possible. Get ourselves... Staravia. Yes. Then we headed over to the first team starbase where we got a phone call from Cassiopeia. He wants us to take down each team starbase and the leaders inside. After defeating 30 of the grunts Pokemon inside, it was time to take on the first team star leader, the dark type leader Giacomo, who defo modeled his look after Shadow the Hedgehog. His first couple of Pokemon were easily defeated by Sarabi, and then he brought out the Starmobile. So we tarried up Cartman, and with a couple of punches, Shadow the Hedgehog had been defeated. We got our first team star badge, Cassiopeia called us, and Penny showed up to give 
give us our reward. I wanted her to actually keep some of the money to get rid of that Splatfest hair colour she's got going on. For the next shiny hunt, I headed into the desert with the plan of getting a shiny Tinker Tink. So, with a furry and Kenta sandwich eaten, we began our hunt. This is all I want, right? This is all I want. I want this with Phalanx. We, we need that. We need that, but with Phalanx. <laughs> there, there, there has to be a version of it somewhere on the internet. Apparently the gift's offensive. And that's a shiny bronzer? It goes around the world and la 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 la. We got it. We got a shiny. <laughs> what? All right. I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Boom. Let's go. Oh, no. Yeah. Should we call it Vine? I'm down for calling it Vine. Our next shiny had been claimed. A nice green shiny bronzer. And with that, it unlocks the next badge and test. But before we get to do the test, it's Nimona the Vampire. So we went outside to challenge Motorola to a Pokemon battle and absolutely wiped the floor with her. So it was time to start the gym test. Oh, I always forget about the little gym activities you've got to do beforehand. Isn't this just like spot that person in the background. It's like where's Wally or something, right? Do you think he's a Twitch streamer? Clive is live! Oh god, here we go. Imagine being a streamer. Cringe. She's just like green screened in. Get a better fitting jacket, Iono. Oh, where, where, where could, where could he possibly be? I love, is it, is he here? Is it the Patricius? Oh, that's not Clive. Oh no. Is this Clive? If I can play Dora the Explorer right now. But you're telling me Voltov's ass is not Clive. And alright, same colour scheme and everything. Um, is it you in the background? She says Frendo. Boom. Get your eyes checked, Frendo. Ah, there we go. I see. This guy enjoying a nice sandwich. After some messing around, we found Clive all three times and moved on to the actual gym battle. And with it being against the streamer, we had some fun. Entering the, the proper goods. Or Donated five grand! Belly ball. This is me after I ate my curry today. Oh my god, yeah. Every TikTok comment. What game is this? Why did you play as a girl? Do you play any other games? What game is this? What's Pokemon? Yo, can you shout me out? Can I follow you? Who would be the most streamer Pokemon to have? Like, if you see a Pokemon, you think, yeah, that, that Pokemon streams. I'd say Meloetta because it looks like it's got a headset. Vaporeon would be in the hot tub category for sure. I feel like Psyduck would make a, a good, like, just chatting streamer. Smeagol would be in the art channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snorlax in the sleeping category. Sneezer would be one of those cringe kids doing pranks. What up, Sneasel crew, and welcome back to another prank. Sableye with a crap jewelry channel. You don't want to miss out on this one, guys. 19th century emeralds from Gen 3. Go, Spooderman. All right, Iono needs to give me her stream key. That's how this works. If you beat another PokeTuber in a battle, you get their stream key. So I now take over all of Iono's socials. Easy claps in chat. I'm the streaming queen. How do you know I'm not wearing an Iono cosplay right now? Now would be a great time to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the playthrough. I'm actually racing Iono to 30,000 subs, so help us get there. Moving on, after getting the electric badge, we did some searching around the overworld for our next shiny target and came across an outbreak I had never seen in the game myself. And it is... Oh my god, it's wild Sylveons? And they're only level 40? Eh? Bro. So we started to knock out 60 Sylveons, and at this point it was 11pm, meaning that I only had one hour to find the shiny Pokemon before the outbreaks reset for the day. While knocking out the Sylveons, my Bronzor finally evolved. I should have checked this so long. If I checked this when I was doing the Dinos, oh my god, dude. We would have had so much longer with it. Look at how many there are as well. With one sandwich down already, we were in the final 30 minutes of finding this Sylveon. And after making the second sandwich, we gained a little bit of experience, which meant... Wait, who's evolving? Oh. Harry Armagrande. Let's go. 
You're welcome back, Amy. Look at those purple gloves, dude. Now we were three minutes left until midnight, which is a shame because Sylveon would have been a really nice shiny Pokemon to add to the team. <gasps> there it is! Oh my god! We've just under three minutes left to go! We did it! Oh my god! With the time against us. I don't believe it. Holy crap, level 41. Right. I'm gonna throw a one great ball. Wait, do I have a quick ball at all? I have two quick ball. I have one quick ball. Oh my god, imagine. Bro. No, we just gotta hope I can actually get it. Oh my god! <laughs> one ball! Yo, holy crap. After all that time spent going up the mountain trying to get to the friggin' Gogo, whatever it was. What's it called? Skiddo. We end up with a shiny Sylveon. What? I'm gonna call it Pixie. Wait, but here we go. <laughs> Watch the outbreak disappear. Boom. <laughs> there it is. That is how much time we had left to get it. Like the capture and then that. If it didn't appear. Wouldn't have had it. There's another outbreak like close by as well. Now as awesome as it was to have shiny Sylveon on the team, we couldn't actually use it yet because I caught it at level 41. So it just wouldn't obey me until I got some more badges. So I made some changes to the team and set off to do the next team star base. I put Sarabi, Cartman and Alex up front and knocked out the Grunt's 30 Pokemon. That's about one Pokemon for every frame on screen. Then finally the leader of this base, Hayley Williams revealed herself with her big ass red cowboy boots. Her first mom was a Torkoal, which Sarabi took out quite fast. Next up was a Starmobile, which with Noble raw and tanking the fire moves from it, we defeated it. She walked up to us in the dumbest way possible, like she'd crapped her pants and wants to burly move. And she handed us our next badge. Oh, Charlos. <laughs> Charlos, shut up, Charlos. Why is that the first time I've read that name properly? Charlos? The next day I jumped on and decided that I wanted the shiny Cyclozar. Cyclozar has become my favourite Gen 9 Pokemon over time, so I wanted to find one for the team. So we made a level 1 Dragon Encounter sandwich and started to hunt. But I kind of want to play Pocky MMO as well. And it'd be something for us to all do together. That's a shiny draft. Hang on. What? What? You're not a shiny Cyclozar. Uh, <laughs> what? It was just stood there. I was so busy talking about Pocky MMO. I didn't even notice it for a second. Yeah, guess Giraffarig wants to play Pocky. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I love Giraffe Rig. That's sick. Oh my god, if I get this, I can get a Ferrigarath. Oh my god, I really want it. I really want it. <laughs> Giraffe Rig, my favorite dragon type. Oh, I've, it's a guy as well. I've got to call it Jeffrey. Oh my god, if I get it, I've got to call it Jeffrey. Let's go! Yeah, I'm going to call it Jeffrey after the Toys R Us mascot. Yes, dude, that's sick. You know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. I think Giraffe Rig is a sick shiny anyway. Oh my god, as if it was just randomly there. That wasn't even boosted or anything. A nice surprise shiny out of nowhere, which is crazy because you can't even find Toys R Us anymore, so it's limited edition and everything. So we named him Jeffrey and went off to what I thought was the next badge we needed to do. Let's go! I don't know what level this is going to be. Oh my god, it's sick. Don't fad! Don't phone me right now, I'm in day. Oh, it's sadder. Hang on, i got some screenshots to take. Lol, imagine missing. Why is bro screenshotting? If only you could see my Switch album. Oh, this is gonna be a pain. But Brick Brick's so annoying, it's so strong. What level is this thing? My Pokemon are so weak. Holy crap. Wait! Cartman has Surf? When did I give him Surf? I totally forgot. Bro. What? Let's go, Alex. I don't think it's supposed to be fine. This, this is the next thing on my list, I'm pretty sure. One sec. Let, let me double check my correct order. Pokemon Scarlet Best Order. No, I'm I'm in the wrong area. Wait, am I in the wrong area? What's the thing next to the lighthouse? Oh, I'm supposed to be doing off them. Run! Run! No! <laughs> I got mixed up between because they're both sandy. No! Imagine I do it now. Run! Oh no! <laughs> Indeed. When it one-shot Harry Armor Grande, I should have been like, yeah, this makes sense. Nuzlocke rules, I'd cry right now. Oh my god. I can't believe... Right, why have two titans on each side of the map in deserts? Where is Larvesta going? What if I just... Never mind. <laughs> I had a plan, and then it said no. Jeffrey. 
You're level 25, you're new to the team. It's your first day on the job. I'm so sorry this is what you have to witness. I'm really sorry, Jeffrey. Wait, why was that super effective? Jeffrey! Jeffrey! Hang on! Hang on! Jeffrey! I thought it was pure ground. No, Jeffrey. You were so close. First day on the job. And he's only level 25. Use rapid spin. Use rapid spin. Use rapid spin. Why are you using so much brick break now? Jeffrey, no. Do I have a max revive? I, I don't. I kind of want to fail because this isn't the right order. It kind of messes everything up. If I beat this with board, I swear. <laughs> Never give up. Never. <laughs> Bro, that did nothing. This bird sucks. Jeffrey did so much. Wait, what? Oh. Capsa Kid! So, alright, well, I've done that battle for later on then. Capsa Kid! Oh my god, that scared the crap out of me. Get me the hell out of this desert. <laughs> Get me the hell out of this desert. Oh my god. Right, well, that's, that's sorted for later on then, right? I won't have to do that again. It's here. This is the one I'm supposed to be at. After somehow defeating a Titan I shouldn't have even been fighting in the first place, we got back on course and traveled to the correct Titan. All right, this should be much easier. If this is somehow harder than <laughs> Great Tusk, I swear. So we tear it up Cartman and knocked it out with one false palm. We chased it down to the place where it munches the Herba Mystica, teamed up with Arvin, and yet again took it down. We found the salty Herba Mystica, fed Coridon and Arvin's Houndstone. Sorry, sorry, I mean my boss diff. It's really easy to get them mixed up right now. Coridon learned how to jump higher and we left the cave. Next up, I hunted a shiny Pokemon that I wanted to reclaim. In the past, I had failed a shiny reap on my stream. What's my most embarrassing shiny fail? In order to answer that lemon, I would have had to have failed a shiny before. So when I do fail a shiny, I'll let you know. Let's hope no one ever breaks into my house. I didn't see her until you did. <laughs> shiny Marie? Bro, I wasn't paying attention. Let's hope no one ever breaks into my house. Oh! Bro, it's right there. That's full odds. Oh, that's, full, that's a full odds Marie. Did I say earlier on that I wanted the sheep as well? Oh, no. No! Why do I talk? Why do I speak? So now it was time to try and reclaim it. I made a sandwich with an electric encounter power and searched around as hundreds of sheep spawned in the area. Oh! Yo! What? Pink sheep! That was only like 15 minutes into the sandwich. That's wild. Alright. I have finally reclaimed the pink sheep. Oh my god, that feels so good. Oh man, I didn't miss this one. Right, level nine. Let's get the ball and then we can go do another badge. That's sick. There we go. Easy. And then, of course, there is only one thing I can name this thing. We got the candy. This was a perfect shiny to find. It was a reclaim of a failed shiny, but the next badge I'm gonna do is the water badge. So having an electric sheep on the team will be great. I leveled it up until it evolved. Hey, Candy is evolving, let's go. And there is the fluffy. Man, I can't wait for the Amphrost. Look at how green the tail is, that looks sick. It was time for the next gym test. Legit, just buying some food. The game suddenly became an eBay auction. We won, finished the gym test, and went back to the town to battle Kofu. Kofu's first mom was a Veluza, which is what he's gonna be after this battle. We paralyzed it and then took it out with Trailblaze from Spooderman. Next up was Wug Trio, which Cartman handled no problem. His final mom was a Water Terrored Crabominal. And after a couple of false palms from Cartman, we had our next badge. Since Scarlet has been out, I've done a ton of sandwich hunting. But one thing I've not really done is outbreak hunting. So I wanted my next hunt to be a random outbreak on the map. I came across a Qfan outbreak and started to knock them out and search around the area. <gasps> there it is. Yes. Oh my god, my voice. I've not spoken in like three hours. <laughs> oh my god. I think my voice forgot how to talk, but there it is, a shiny Kufan. Oh, from an outbreak. I went through Meowths, Persians, I tried an ice sandwich, and then I finally came across this outbreak, and I'm like, yes, I'm taking this Kufan. And I lost my voice along the way. But we take those, dude. Yes, a nice little shiny elephant. Let's go! Oh, man. I literally just tweeted this out about shiny hunting as well. <laughs> 
And I'm definitely feeling that 10 second adrenaline boost right now. Let's go. Uh, we need a good name. Um, I'm gonna call it, was it a girl? I'm gonna call it Cassie. Cassie the Q fan. Yes, let's have a look at it. So as I was checking out the Q fan, this happened. Hey, here we go, shiny. Is that another, wait, 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 wait. Is that a shiny Q fan in the background? There's no way. There's no way that's a shiny Q fan. Wait, wait, I wouldn't have noticed it if I didn't start evolving. Was it? Is it? I think it is. There's no way, dude. What? I was just casually going through my moves and updating stuff. Man, that looks sick. Right, we can keep current moves. I can learn that in a second if I need to. There's literally a shiny in the background. Even though it's a dupe, I'm still gonna capture it. Yo, let's go. <laughs> There's no way. Another shiny key fan. After how long it took the first time, I just get two like that. What? Right, as we get the awesome pink shiny Ampharos as well. Nice. What, what do I name this one now? <laughs> Obviously, I can't use this one with it being a dupe, but I will name it and put it with the Nackley dupe that we got. Wow, insane. As if. I've just been chilling here while I've been upgrading my Pokemon's, like, moves and evolving stuff. Um, let's call it... We've got Cassie. Let's call it Lassie. <laughs> we got Cassie and Lassie. Oh, wait, it's a boy. Um... Let's call it Gassy. <laughs> there we go. That'll do. Nice. We <coughs> got and Gassy. That's so good. An insanely fast dupe shiny. I can't use it on the team, but it was so awesome to see. But with my brand new shiny, that unlocks another badge that I can go and do. The next badge on our list was another team star base in Lag Tree Thicket. And I know I make a lot of jokes about the frames in this game, but my god, this base. Just look at this. You're not the 30 Mons are defeated, it's time to meet the leader of this team, Starbase. Atticus. Honestly, if I lived in Lag Tree Thicket, I'd want to cover up my face as well. This was a poison battle, so of course, I brought out the most toxic Mon I know, Cartman. Cartman took out Skunk Tank, Alex took out the Muck and a regular Reverie Room, before using nothing but Dig to weaken down the Starmobile. Jeffrey delivered the final blow, and another badge had been earned. The next day, we checked the map, and I couldn't believe it. A Cloth Outbreak. I could actually get my favourite shiny Pokemon after not getting one earlier in the playthrough. So we rushed over there and started to knock out cloths and before we even got to 60 knocked out. Oh my god! What? Dude that was so fast I've not even done the full 60 yet. Oh my god. Yo it's the best shiny in the game. It is the best shiny in the frigging game. I can't believe we just got shiny cloth like that. Oh my god I've been recording for like four minutes. <laughs> what? I saw the outbreak and came straight here. I don't believe that. What? I never get them early either. I always have to do the whole 60 and wait for ages. Oh, it's got to go in the great ball. It has to go in the great ball. Let's go, dude. That's so good. That's my favorite shiny in this game. Yes. I'll have to go back to Sableye at some other point. As soon as I saw this outbreak, I knew I had to go for the cloth. I wanted it originally when we got the Natclay. So it's so cool that I've got it now. I'm just straight up going to call it blue. I know it's level 15. Oh, man. Right. Add to your party. So after getting blue crabs, we were able to move on and take on the next badge of our adventure. Now, this gym leader, in my opinion, is the most overhyped gym leader in history. He's just a standard dude. It's Larry. I don't understand the hype, but if you are a Larry fan, please let me know in the comments down below so I can see if this man is as loved as I think he is. So after totally not googling what the secret menu item was, we got straight into the battle against Larry. With Larry being a normal ass dude, of course he uses the most boring type. So we sent out Cartman and we wiped the floor with Larry before getting our next badge. After claiming the badge, we met the champion of the region, Gita, who wanted to see a battle between me and I've got a boner. So off we went outside to once again whoop her ass. During the battle, I realized, why hasn't my giraffe rig evolved yet? So after some research, I noticed that it didn't have a certain move called Twin Beam, which is what it needs to evolve. So we leveled it up, it learned Twin Beam, and now we have the true spirit of Toys R Us. Finally, there we go. I totally forgot it was just that move it needed to evolve. Here comes our shiny for a giraffe. Oh, dude, it's such a sick shiny. It is true, Jeffrey. Now, look at that. 
I already had my next shiny target in mind. There's a super easy spot in a cave where you can set up a picnic table. And if you wait, you can get 16 sable eyes that spawn out of this wall. Sable eyes are really cool shiny, so I got my picnic table out and did some resets. And after not too long... Oh! Oh! Yo! Literally the first one out of the wall on that reset? That's sick! Yes, dude! <clears throat> Shiny Sableye, the look today is insane. Let's go. Oh, man. I'll put this one in an Ultra Ball. Sableye is such a sick shiny, dude. Look at it. A nice golden shiny. <laughs> Ferrigaraf should not be in this cave. It is so tall to be in this cave. There it is. We got our Sableye. Nice. We can go do another badge now. That's crazy fast. The all-reliable Sableye cave spot. <laughs> It's a girl, so I'm gonna call it Jewelly. Oh, it's got a mark. Intense mark. A mark for a feisty Pokemon. Julie the feisty. A super easy shiny, and it was marked as well. Nice. It's time to head to the Ice Mountain for the next badge and test. When we arrive, Moist Critical is waiting for us. I mean, look at his initials. They are actually MC, so I'm convinced it's him. The test at this gym has you take part in double battles, which is a perfect opportunity to show off our shiny Pokemon. After battling a couple of kids, Moist Critical then challenges us to a battle, but we make quick work of him. I can't wait to see a video on his channel later titled, I was wrong about proper. Then it was time for the next gym leader. She asked if I wanted a rap battle or a Pokemon battle. Bitch, don't make me bring out the Electro, Diglett, Nidoran, Mankey, Venus, Oritata, Fero, Pidgey, Tiki, Jolteon, Dragonite, Gassi, Ponte, Vaporeon, Polyrath, Butterfree, because you don't want that smoke. Anyway, I hope her rap skills are better than her battling skills, because this was super easy. And it was cool seeing multiple of my shinies battling together. And with that, that's another badge down. After the gym, I explored the all-reliable Ice Mountain. I always head here to find a shiny Pokemon during the shiny races. But as I was searching around, I came across an interesting outbreak that I've never seen before. A Glaceon outbreak. Now I thought Glaceon shiny was actually pink and purplish, but after double checking, it turns out it's just a slight difference of blue, but I was determined to find it. So after knocking out 60 of them and hunting, that one looks different. <coughs> that one does look different. Let's get it on solid land. Oh, that's it. That has to be it. Let's go. I've actually never shiny hunted this thing before. That, with the snow in the background, was so difficult to see. But I noticed it straight away. I always thought Glaceon turned, like, pink. I thought the bits on it turned, like, pinkish purple. I didn't realise it was just a different shade of blue. That's crazy. But finally, shiny Glaceon. Let's go. I'd never seen an outbreak for this thing either. So, being able to get a shiny that I've never had on this game, with an outbreak I've never had, has been pretty fun. Let's go! Yes! Shiny Glaceon. I don't even know what to call this thing. I usually name my ice shiny Pokemon Elsa, but this time I straight up just called it Frozen 2. Sometimes going for the difficult to see shinies can be a pain, but it's always worth it once you capture them. Another shiny down and it's on to the next badge. Now earlier on in the playthrough, I accidentally started the fight against the Great Tusk Titan. So all I had to do for the next badge was defeat it one more time with Arvin. And because last time we beat it with a level 20 something Jeffrey, it was time to meet the true Jeffrey. We terrored it and two shot it and went inside the cave to grab another Herb and Mystica for Arvin. Coridon and my dog's dead both ate a sandwich, and Coridon now had the ability to glide. Moving on, now that we can glide, we can finally get to an area I wanted to hunt in. North Province Area 1. Here with a fire sandwich, you can actually hunt Flareons and score villains. Two super cool shiny Pokemon to hunt for. Is that it? Yes, dude, let's go! Oh, this is such a sick Pokemon. Oh my god, score villains so cool, dude. Oh my god, it's level 47? Damn. Now, I know we already have Sarabi with some fire moves and stuff, but I just really like Scar Villain. That's the whole reason I went for it. It's such a cool Pokemon. I'm glad we didn't get the Flareon, because I'm surprised I've already had two shiny evolutions during this playthrough. There we go. Shiny Scar Villain. Yes, dude. Only one thing changes on shiny Scarvillain, so I knew exactly what to name it. What kind of pants does Mario wear? Denim, denim, denim. That is its name. That is his name. Let's check and make sure it's not gonna mark. Sick. Oh, what a cool shiny. What does it have? 
It was time to head to the psychic gym next, but not before my Sharona showed up for another battle. And for someone who loves to battle, she also loves to lose. Moving on to the next gym test, I feel like I would actually enjoy this one if it ran better and was more like a rhythm game. Give me Pokemon Guitar Hero or something. Anyway, after a couple of sections of this and some battles, we went on to fight Tulip, the gym leader who specializes in psychic type Pokemon and makeup, which is crazy because one wipe and both of her businesses are gone completely. We defeated her and we took the badge. Now, I'm no stranger to failing shiny Pokemon and earlier on, we got ourselves a shiny Mareep, which was a reclaim of her failed shiny. And today, an outbreak appeared, which I knew I had to go for, Psyduck. Psyduck was my first shiny fail in Scarlet and Violet and it happened about two days after the game's release. For instance, I'm going to, I'm trying to see what- I think I saw a shiny Psyduck. Don't say that. Oh no. Uh, Joey, you did miss a shiny Psyduck. Shut up. Shut up right now. You know how times people have said- like, Shut up right now. Should have got on the clip. I'll find the clip. <laughs> Where oh, is it? Oh my god, it's right there. Oh my god. No, dude. Wait, what? Oh. I'm looking oh, right god. at the screen, you dumbass. It's right there. Just turn your head, please. Can pass me, go back. So, it was time to reclaim Cal the Psyduck. There it is. Yes. Oh my god, that was well fast. Carl! Yee! Is it a boy? Is it Carl? Oh, it's Carly! Okay. I always get Carly. I never get Carl. Come on, Carly. In the great ball, you got a match. Yay! Go, Carly! It's never Carl. <laughs> it's always Carly. So, Carly had been reclaimed. I know Shiny Whelmer is my mascot, but I love Carl. If I ever had to choose something to replace Whelmer in the future, Carl would be the number one spot. Up next was the Ice Gym, and to qualify, we had to race down a mountain of snow. This is just Sonic Adventure, honestly. After giving Coridon some frozen balls, it was time to take on the gym leader. It's just hit December, so Grush is saying it's freezing is such a mood right now. But don't worry, I'm about to turn up the heat. I wiped out his entire team with just Sarabi and Flamethrower, and we won the next badge. I wanted to hunt a Pokemon near Casserole, leg as this was a location that we visit later on in the story. So we started our next shiny hunt and after seeing one in the last gym battle I wanted a shiny Altaria because it's such a sick shiny. Yo shiny Altaria yes oh that's sick it's so golden. I don't one luxury ball I don't think it will capture it though. Perish oh shit <laughs> no there's no way. I didn't even think about Perish Song. Oh no. Stop using it. I wonder if I could just leave the battle. I can just leave the battle. It'll still be there. I should be fine. I'll try one more bottle. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you run, you can just run back into it. I just gotta hope I can run every time. Okay, so I'll just encounter it again. It should be back up to full HP. Yeah, okay. So now I'm just gonna hope I get lucky with a capture and it doesn't use Parish Song. Oh my god, I don't forget about Parish Song. Oh, there we go, I got it. Nice. <laughs> That would have been awful if I failed that. Oh my god. So yeah, super lucky for me that Pokemon Scarlet and Violet actually allow you to run away from the Pokemon you're battling without them disappearing. But Nimbus, the shiny Altaria, had finally been caught and it was time to take on the next team Starbase. This team Starbase was all cute fairy type Pokemon and the leader was called Ortega. This is how I pictured Jenna Ortega would look if she played Thursday instead of Wednesday. Another Starmobile down and the team Starbase had been completed and we went off to search for our next shiny Pokemon. After checking the map, I noticed an outbreak right next to our house from the start of the game. Something that I've never seen before, so we decided to hunt for it. It was an outbreak of Magikarp, and after not too long... Yo, shiny Magikarp! Yes! It's so weird to have an outbreak right next to the house. I had to come do this one. Little golden gorp. Let's go! This should be super easy to capture as well. One Ultra Ball. Easy, easy. That was an easy hunt. I'm gonna call it carp in all caps. Gorp.
With a shiny water Pokemon captured, it was fitting that we finish off the final Titan fight at Lag Lake. After fighting a few Tatsugiris, one finally got gobbled up by a Dondozo, but Kande made quick work of it. We met up with Arvin to defeat the final Titan and to obtain the final Herba Mystica. Now I know I've been making jokes along the way about Arvin and his dog, but this story ends up being super sweet and wholesome, with Mabostiff finally becoming better. So I guess the moral of the story is, eat a lot of sandwiches. After the wholesome cutscene, we got our last call from Professor Sada, letting us know that Coridon can now climb anywhere it wants. During the phone call, Arvin hears who it is and reveals to us that Sada is his mum. No, I'm pretty jealous because that means someone else gets to call a mummy as well. She tells us to head back to the lab at the lighthouse so we plan to meet Arvin there later on. For now, we have another shiny Pokemon and a badge to collect. See, for my final shiny hunt, I was checking the map and saw a Larvesta outbreak. With all the fun I've been having with Demona's name, I thought it'd be funny to get a shiny Volcarona named Demona. So off I went to look for an outbreak of one. That's not a sh Is that a shiny fampy? Is that a shiny fampy? Well, that's a shiny fampy. What? <clears throat> All right. Well, guess I'm not getting. Did I have one of these? I can't remember if I've had one of these. Did I get one of these? I think I might have gone for one at some point and ended up with something else. Let's capture it. Let's fa capture it and find out. As if I've been going back and forth on this outbreak because it's lower odds, and I've just come across off. Full odds, fan pit. Oh, it's, I'm probably getting confused because if I fan, I'm getting all the elephants. Yeah, I'll take a shiny uh, fan pit. There's a cyclozar here. What? I swear you can't. It must have fallen down from the mountain. <laughs> I swear you can't get cyclozars in the desert. There we go. Shiny fan pit. So it's not the larvester, but I will take it. I gotta think. What am I naming this thing? We'll just call it Dumbo. We'll just call it Dumbo. I didn't get Larvesta. I found a full odds fan pit <laughs> while I was going back and forth towards the outbreaks. Oh, sugar. Um, no, I want my Pokey Clicker save. That's a shame because I was really hoping for the Larvesta because it evolves into Volcarona and I wanted to call it Nimona. But I will take Dumbo the fan pit. How crazy is it that I go for an outbreak so I can find the final Mon a little bit quicker and after about an hour of searching, the game just throws a full odds shiny at me. But man, that's it. Those are 18 shinies for the playthrough. We got two spare ones. We've still got a ton more stuff to do and now we get to do it with the true shiny team. But I've also been playing a ton of Pokey Clicker. If you guys want a game to play while you're waiting for the DLC, just Google Pokey Clicker, start playing it and just keep me updated on where you guys get to. I'm addicted to it. You can shiny hunt on it and it goes all the way up to Gala. <laughs> Just a, just a tip, if you guys are looking for a game to play right now, join me in playing some Pokey Clicker. All right, so we had our 18 shiny Pokemon, but it's nowhere near over yet. We still have one badge to go and there's a ton more story to do. And now we get to do it with a complete shiny team. The final badge is at the last team star base, where I have to fight Death by Snoo Snoo over here. But she ended up being super easy to defeat. After defeating her, we get our usual call from Cassiopeia, the mastermind behind Team Star, who tells us to meet them at the schoolyard after dark. Clive is here too and agrees that we have to go find out who this is. When we arrive at the doors of the school, Clive is waiting for us, or should I say direct to Clavel. Oh my god, what a surprise, I had no idea. And reveals to us that he is the head of Team Star, and battles us. After a difficult battle being under leveled and using a couple of items, we were able to finally take down Clavel, who at the end of the battle said that he's not really the head of Team Star, he just wanted to test us. What a dickhead and a time waster, come on dude. So we went to the schoolyard to see the true head of Team Star, Penny. Penny then challenges us to a battle where all of her Pokemon are different evolutions. We take down her final evolutions Sylveon with our much better shiny Sylveon and then the leaders of Team Star show up for a nice wholesome ending. They all become students at the school again and meet Penny face to face but our journey is not over yet. We still have the Pokemon League to take on so with my shiny team in hand it's time to become the Paldane champion. As we get though we're tested with some questions about the Pokemon world and after cheating and googling all the answers the battle begins. My final team for the league is shiny Cartman the Hariyama, Kanbe the Ampharos, Sorabi the Pyro, 
Star, Blue the Cloth, Jeffrey the Ferrigarath, and Pixie the Sylveon. We challenge Rika first, who has an all grind team. Easy mod for me and the Shinies. Next up, and I can't state this enough, I hate everything about this character. Ash Ketchum got his Pokemon license at 10 years old, meaning he can take on the gym leaders. So why is a toddler challenging me to a battle right now? You should be potty training, not Pokemon training. Anyway, I kick the toddler's ass, and we move on to- Oh, for God's sake, is that Larry again? It's fine, I know he uses normal type Pokemon, so I'll put Cartman up front, and he's using flying type Pokemon. You know what? Fly yourself off a cliff, Larry. Finally, I'm down to the last Elite Four member, Dragon Master Hassle, and the only hassle he must have is his haircut, because fighting him was pretty easy. Seems like we just used Sylveon to beat up his back's caliber. Man goes to the hairdressers and shows a picture of the broomsticks from Fantasia, and he's like, say less. But with that, my shiny team had taken down the Elite Four. Now for the champion, and I only have one thing to say about Gita. More like Gita good, because Jesus, has there ever been a champion match as easy as this? Anyway, now that that was a breeze, it's time for the true end game. Heading down to area zero. Oh, come on, you know what? I've outgrown her. <laughs> Come on, Nimona. All right, one last battle before we head into the end game. And it's crazy that how insane you are for Pokemon battling, you still suck ass. My shiny Pokemon just won like that. Now, come on, we've got to get over to Arvin's place because he's got some serious mummy issues. So we head off to meet up with Arvin at his mum's lab. When we enter, everything boots up inside. And there she is, Professor Sada. She tells us that we need to bring a team down to Area Zero to help her out. But before we go, Arvin now wants to battle us? What does everyone in this game need to test you? I've already killed every titan, become the champion, and beat up a whole organization. How does beating up a dog that was deathly sick 10 minutes ago prove anything? So of course, I beat Arvin's ass, and we make our way to area zero. After getting to the zero gate, I think I've realized that it represents all four of us. Nimona has zero chill, Penny has zero fucks to give, Arvin has zero parents, and I've got zero patience for the lot of them. Apart from the one cool cutscene where we travel on Pokeridon's back to get down below, the whole way down is just the other characters arguing and talking while I'm trying to run away from them all. My goal is to see Professor Sada. We have to visit each station to turn the power on, and the deeper we get into Area Zero, the more we realize that something is wrong here. At the final station, Professor Sada's AA batteries start to run out, so we hurry down to the center of Area Zero. Here we must battle multiple strong Paradox Pokemon to get through to Sada on the other side. After a few battles, the others hold off the rest of the Paradox Pokemon, and we make our way into Arvin's mum's bedroom. As we enter, Sada turns on, and so do I. Turns out she's an AI robot and the real professor died ages ago. So we gotta go easy on the your mum jokes on Arvin for a while. We follow her down to a time machine that needs to be destroyed. Turns out this is where the Paradox Pokemon have been coming from. The past. As it's about to be shut down, Robot Mummy turns evil and we have one final battle to save Paldea with our shiny Pokemon team. The Paradox Pokemon are tough, but my shiny Pokemon are tougher. The others run through just in time for Sada to be fully taken over by the Paradise Protection Protocol and she has one one Pokemon left. Another Coridon that was responsible for the real Professor Sada's death. This dinosaur bitch is the reason I'll never be able to be with the real Professor Sada. So, because he's the bigger Chad, our own Coridon steps in, takes the power of the Chaos Emeralds, and destroys the mean Coridon. So after saving Paldea, you think our adventure would be over, but there's still a bunch of work to do. After saving the region and defeating Mummy Sada, we got a makeover and prepared for our journey into the first DLC, the Teal Mask. Before we begin, I needed to start a shiny Pokemon. A shiny that I can take into the region with me before I even start shiny hunting. And there was one new Pokemon that I had my eye on, Diplin. The new evolution of Aplin. So I needed a shiny Aplin, and thanks to my Twitch chat, they taught me a nice and easy way to hunt it. So off we went to Light Tree Thicket to find ourselves a nice green shiny apple. Wait, that's green! That's green! Is that it already? Okay, how do I get it? <laughs> how do I get it? It's green, man. Yes. Green apple. Just ram into the tree. My controller keeps disconnecting, dude. This is not the time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there it is. The method works. A hey, critical capture. So now that I had Shiny Aplin, and I spent the day before grinding Herba Mystica for Shiny Hunting, it was time to start the DLC. As I loaded into the game, I was immediately met with a phone call on my Rotom phone. It was Jacques. Jacques said that the yearly field trip was about to start, and he needed me to go meet him at the school. Before heading back, we grabbed Shiny Aplin and we named him. We named him Dipsy after the green Teletubby, due to it sharing a similar name and colour to Diplin, and certain physical features as well. It was time to head to the school. Once we got 
got there, we were met by a new face, Briar. Briar was here to meet me and the other students who had been chosen to go on the field trip. Jack came over and they casually name dropped the Unova region, being the place that the second DLC is going to take place. Then they told me that the region we are heading to is called Kitakami. I was told not to worry about telling my mother in the game, as they had already had to sign the permission slip that parents needed to sign for the kids to be able to go. So I guess now we know why Arvin isn't going. No, because I've already finished Pokemon Scarlet, it meant that the DLC would already be scaled to where I'm currently at in the game. So all the Pokemon are going to be level 60 plus. So we gave some rare candies to my shiny Applin to make sure it was ready to battle. Afterwards, Briar asked us about the Scarlet book, and she started to read a passage about the disc Pokemon, Terrapoggers. After reading the book, the old gang had showed up. The gang's all here. Yes, the gang we've come to know and love. Brittany, Tony, and Bert. Look at them. Never met them before in my life. Who are they? Tony and Bert. <laughs> so off we went to a brand new region, and the Teal Mask DLC had begun. The hidden treasure of Area Zero, which is the friends we made along the way. Once though, we arrived at a bus stop, and the start of Kitakami was introduced to us. Our shiny only adventure begins. Now let me explain how I will be shiny hunting for this playthrough. The new region is about 25% the size of Paldea, and has certain areas of the map written in white text to discover. I will be shiny hunting a Pokemon in every new area of this region while playing through the story. The second rule is that the Pokemon I hunt have to be brand new to this DLC, as you can still find some Pokemon from the base game of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet here. So with the bus stop being the first official place of the region, it was time to see what Pokemon were around. In this first area, we had a choice of Poochyena and Cutiefly, and my Twitch chat voted Poochyena. Jenna. So we made a dark type sandwich and hunted for it. With it being shiny only, it was probably going to take a while. Oh, there it is! <laughs> uh, timer, 28 minutes left, so that's less than two minutes on the sandwich. No. The rare, my first shiny of the DLC. That was so fast, holy. Level 55. Let's go, dude. Yay. Let's go, dude. Yes. So, anyone got any cool dog, dog names? Also, is it marked? Imagine, oh my god, imagine my first one has the destiny mark. Oh my god. Oh, let's go! Yes, dude! The destiny mark! Amazing! Yes! The first one as well, yo! So one thing I forgot to mention was that the DLC actually came out on my birthday, meaning that I could get the destiny mark on a shiny Pokemon, which this Poochyena actually had. Insane. In less than two minutes to find as well, the look was unreal. We named it Shenzi after one of the hyenas from the Lion King and moved on with the story. We were then introduced to the two main characters of this new DLC, brother and sister Carmine and Kieran, who were native to the region of Kitakami. Carmine was the older sister who seemed a bit of a bitch, and Kieran was the younger brother who was pretty shy, and Carmine challenged me to a battle. A perfect time for me to show off my new shinies, and she's actually destroyed me, and you cannot retake the battle. After the battle, the caretaker came out to see what all the noise was about and Carmine and Kieran ran for it. After that loss it was time to make my Pokemon even stronger so we evolved Shenzi into a mighty Enna which looked amazing. We were brought to Kitakami Hall with all the other students and told that this is where we'll be arrested so off we went to go to the next day. The next morning we were met outside by everyone and told to find three important signboards in the area. We were given a selfie stick and told to mingle with the other characters. After speaking to Carmine and Kieran again, Kieran now wanted to battle us. A perfect time for me to prove myself with my Pokemon being stronger now and and we've lost, again. So it was clear that I needed to train, get stronger Pokemon and add more shinies to the team. So we started to explore Kitakami and after not too long I came across a little shop that sold syrupy apples in Mossfell Confluence. So now it was time to evolve Dipsy. Yep, yeah, syrupy apple, all right. Here's our next evolution. This is the first time seeing shiny Diplin. Let's go, Dipsy is evolving. Yeah! He's so oh, he cool. looks so cool, dude. It's full on Dipsy now. Dipsy the Dipling was here, one of the newest shinies a part of the DLC, resembling a caramel apple. But now, I wanted more shiny Pokemon, and luckily, this area was home to another new Pokemon, Pulchergeist. It lives near Bamboo anywhere on the island, so we made a ghost type sandwich and started our hunt for the new tea Pokemon. And after not too long at all, I don't know. Is that different? Is that different or am I going crazy? I feel like that looks different. Let's go! I noticed it! <laughs> yes! Hell yeah, dude! Poochie guys! Oh, this is gonna be difficult. Um, 
Because I don't want to do too... Um, I guess if I Thunderfang it for now, maybe get the Paralysis as well if I'm lucky. Oh, I got the Flinch. Let's do one more. Come on. Paralysis. It knows Leaf Storm. Yo. See, this is what I'm scared of, it being better than my Pokemon. Um, I'm fine for now because I can just revive after this. Come on, Ultra Ball. That's amazing. Yes, dude. Let's go. <laughs> I know exactly what I'm calling it. What are you going to call it? Let me write it down first. <laughs> For God's sake. <laughs> God, that's not a sick it's name. Really good. <laughs> we named it PGG Tips after the brand of tea here in the UK, PG Tips. And with me being PGG, it was the perfect name for our little friend here. Now, I cannot tell you how lucky I was with this shiny Pokemon, because one of its moves was Memento. For those unfamiliar with this move, the Pokemon that uses it makes itself thin in order to drop your attack and special attack. So yeah, if it had hit this move during the battle, it would have been my first shiny fail of the DLC. Three shinies on the team, with two of them being brand new. This was off to a great start. There was another new area nearby called Reveler's Road, where we would start our next shiny hunt, Vulpix. Unfortunately, my luck had ran out. It took a couple of sandwiches to find it, but eventually... Oh, there it is! I was looking at the chat! Yeah! Shiny Firefox. So many golden shinies today. Nice! Try a quick Ultra Ball, just in case. If not, we will Thunderfang it. Never mind, we didn't need to. Let's go! Nice! After a bunch of discussion and some generic Vulpix and Ninetales nicknames, we went with Storm Vixen for the name, and continued in the story. We arrived at the first sign board where Kieran approached us to read the story on the board. It told the tale of the Ogre Pokemon and the loyal three which were named Okie Doggy, Monkey Dory, and Flamingo Wingo all happened to be there as well. The story told of the loyal three laying down their lives to fend off the ogre, and Shrek went back to his swamp. We took an awkward selfie with Kieran and went off to do our next shiny hunt at Apple Hills. Sentry. I love shiny ferret, so Sentry needed to be hunted. A bunch of them would spawn near this tree here, so after making a normal sandwich, we began our hunt for shiny ferret. Oh, my Lotic is so sick, right? Oh, speaking of sick shinies, there it is. Shiny Sentry, yes. Oh my, it's like nearly the same as my Yenna. Look at that. We've been zooming through these today. Yes. All right, I'm not messing around. Let's evolve it. I want to see what shiny ferret looks like in this game. Okay, so the nickname for Sentry. We wanted a ferret name for when it evolved into ferret, so I decided to look up famous ferrets for fun. After some deep dive into some ferret lore, we discovered that Queen Elizabeth I had a ferret. I spent about 10 minutes searching for its name, and I got led to a tweet that said its name was simply, You can see a ferret named Fat Guy tonight on... Na Wait. <laughs> That's not real. That is not what it's called. What was the Queen's Ferret called? It was not called Fat Guy. What was it? <laughs> Where's the Queen's Ferret? I wonder what it's called. Why did it say Fat Guy? So now that we had Fat Guy, it was time to evolve it. And oh my god, this shiny looks so good in the DLC. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Please look good, please look good, please look good. Please be a good pink. Please be a good pink. Also, please be taller than the grass because Jesus Christ. Oh, that looks nice. That's really nice, dude. Let's go, fat guy. Afterwards, we headed out to find the second signboard. From this one, we learned about how the ogre had four masks to use and how its power would change depending on which mask it wore. Pretty cool. Once Kieran left, we went out exploring and found Orny Mountain. Ready for our next hunt, we looked up what new Pokemon we could find for the decks here, and a familiar face showed up. Geodude. Meaning, yet again, Gravel Lad could make it onto our shiny only team. So of course I made a ground type sandwich and went looking for my favourite rock with no legs. Oh, there it is! Yay! The all reliable is gonna be Gravel Lad or Lass. Oh, it looks clean, dude. So many gold shinies. It is gonna be Gravel Lad. Boom! Yeah! Now with Gravel Lad on the team, we were able to go meet Kieran over at the Dreaded Den, which had some connection to the Ogre Pokemon. Here, Kieran challenged us to a battle. Now that I had a ton more shinies on the team, I needed to win this. He threw out his ferret, and I brought out Shenzi. Shenzi was taken down, but Storm Vixen avenged her by taking out the ferret. Next, I threw out PGG Tips, and he had a Poliwhirl. Selecting Leaf Storm, the Poliwhirl got absolutely wrecked, and his final Pokemon was Yanma, which Storm Vixen easily defeated, and we won our first battle against Kieran. Nice! After finishing our battle and walking off, a 
mysterious creature was watching us and ran off. The dreaded den was the home of the ogre, which we checked out with Kieran, and then he told us to go meet him at his house to get ready for a festival happening later that night. Before heading off, we evolved Storm Vixen into Ninetales. Yeah! So pretty. Oh my god, that looks so cool, dude. And of course, Graveler Lad. There, there he is. What, Graveler Lad is evolving? Why is he so close to the camera? Oh my god! Yes! Graveler Lad has returned! We got to Kieran's house and met his grandma and grandpa. They helped me get ready for the festival by changing my look and said that I needed to wear a mask for the festival and that they had some in the back. But when we got there, so did Carmine, who wanted to battle us to decide who would take the mask. What a bitch. So, we battled her. She had a Morpico, Swadloon, Sinistra, the evolved former Poltergeist, and a Mighty Enna, which after some time, we fought and defeated in order to earn the mask for the festival tonight. But because she's a lanky bitch, she didn't let us have it. We arrived at the Festival of Masks. The festival for on to sell celebrate the loyal three Pokemon. Kieran tells us that he really likes the Ogre Pokemon and thinks it's cool, and then runs off to buy us a candy apple. What a nice guy. Then we get forced into a mini game where we have to pop balloons resembling the loyal three and the ogre. Who am I, the monkey from balloons? After finishing the mini game, we leave to see a weird green kid leaving the festival, so we chase after it. As we get there, Wilt from Foster's home catches up to us and shouts up at the weird kid, who suddenly drops its mask, and it's revealed to be a Pokemon. We go to give it its mask back, but it runs off scared. It probably took one look at Carmine and didn't want to chat with the Eiffel Tower. Kieran runs over to ask us what we're doing here, so we lie to him, and he runs off and leaves. Carmine asks us to keep all of this a secret between us, and then the festival ends. The next day, we go and visit Carmine's grandpa, who asks to see the teal mask that was dropped. He then sits us then to tell us a secret. A long, long time ago, a man and an ogre came to Kitty Kami from a foreign land. The people of the village feared the man and the ogre who looked so different from them, and so they refused to let the travellers come anywhere near the village. The man and the ogre were saddened that the villagers did not welcome them, but they were happy just to have each other. They settled quietly in a cave on the mountain. There was only one villager who painted the two travellers. He made several masks for the man and the ogre. The masks were brilliant works, adorned with the gems a man brought from somewhere far away. By wearing these masks, the travellers could hide their true faces and mingle with the villagers. The man and the ogre were overjoyed. They thanked the mask maker for his kindness. Wearing the masks, the man and the ogre started secretly joining the village festival. The mysterious pair soon became the talk of the village because of their brilliant masks. In fact, rumours about them quickly spread far and wide, even to distant lands. But rumours of exquisite shiny masks attract more than just innocent curiosity. A group of greedy Pokemon soon made their way to the land of Kitakami. These Pokemon sneaked into the cave in which the man and the ogre lived, and tried to make off with the masks, which were carefully stored away. The man happened to be there, he managed to hold on to one of the masks, but he was not strong enough to protect them all. The Pokemon stole the other three masks. Several hours later, when the ogre returned to the cave, it found its beloved home in ruin, and all that was left were the signs of a struggle and a teal mask. The ogre donned the mask and went down to the village, perhaps to see, uh, search for its friend. It found the greedy Pokemon there, gloating over their stolen masks, and defeated them. The villagers, of course, had no idea what was happening, nor why. All they saw was the raging ogre, and they felt great fear. The villagers thought the three Pokemon had fallen trying to protect the village from the ogre. To one of their sacrifice, the villagers named the Loyal Three, and interred them with care. Wounded and weak, the ogre returned to its cave, alone with great sadness. So he's the innocent one. So it turns out Shrek is actually the innocent one in all of this. We leave the teal mask with Grandpa so that it can get fixed. Turns out Kieran was listening all along. I'm sure nothing bad will come from this happening. So after all of that, it was time for our next shiny hunt at Fellhorn Gorge. And I already knew which shiny I was going to hunt. Shiny Ducklet. And you will see why in a second. And in literally a second, because this was my fastest shiny hunt of Scarlet and Violet. Oh, Weeper as well, but I can't get Weeper because it's been in the game before. Hey, oh my god, I found it already! <laughs> I said it in before, Shiny Duckling is right there! <laughs> oh my god, I'm putting it in a heal wall! Dude, that's insane! <coughs> oh my god! I thought Poochiena was going to be the fastest one today, because Poochiena took two minutes. That's the fastest one today. Holy... Level 69 as well. <laughs> hey, yo! 
Shiny Ducklet's official name is Grapes, after the popular YouTube song A Duck Walked Up to a Lemonade Stand. But seeing how the game will not allow us to use the name Grapes, we went with Lemonade Stand. Afterwards, we bump into Kieran, who tells us that the final signboard is over by Paradise Barrens. But before we head over there, it was time for another shiny hunt at Wistful Fields, which was on the way. This area was perfect. It had a shiny Pokemon that I've always wanted, a shiny Viker Vault. So we hunted for shiny Grubbin, and after about an hour or so of hunting... Oh, that's it! That's a shiny Grubbin! Yes, dude! That's the one I wanted. I can get a Viker Vault when I want now. Next shiny hunt is down. Okay, that's very noticeable compared to the others. That is very noticeable. Boom! One Ultra Ball. This is Railgun. Yeah, he's super cool. Mm -hmm. Boom. It's so sick, dude. Oh my god. That is a sick shiny. That, oh my god. I finally have my shiny Viker Vault, a Pokemon that I never hunted for back in Gen 7, but it looks amazing. We named it Railgun. So we headed over to Paradise Barrens next, and the second I got there, I already knew which shiny I wanted to hunt next, Jangmo. We are one, you and I, we are like the earth and sky, one family under the sun, hoi a bamboe. <laughs> oh, there it is! Yes, it looks so sick! Oh my god, it looks so sick, yes! And we got it with the ferret, which is just pink as well. Bro, look at how nice that looks! Yes! Oh, there's so many shinies! <laughs> you got so many today, well done! Oh no, my god. I, I feel like, because I was singing Lion King when I found it, I need to name it something from the Lion King. Yes! Oh my god, look at his arms! That looks sick! Yes! Alright, I'm ready to see this one. Here we go. Here we... Come on! Bro! It's that so looks sick. sick! Oh my god, dude! That looks amazing! Braids for days. We named it Kiara after Simba's daughter from The Lion King 2, seeing as how I was singing a song from the film when we found it. Just before we went to the final signboard, my chat told me that in this cave was the evolution item for PGG tips, the unremarkable teacup. He's so small. He's jumping a little coffee pot right now. And now he's young. Yeah! He's so cute! Yeah, look at his little hair! <laughs> we finally arrived at the final sign bar to meet Kieran. He asked us to battle him, and our shiny Pokemon absolutely destroyed him. It was cool because we had a lot of the same Pokemon, so being able to see the difference between the normal Pokemon and the shiny Pokemon was awesome. After reading the sign board, Kieran told us that the Shadow Man in the tail was his great 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 grandpa or something. It was time for the next day. We headed over to the brand new area, the Timeless Woods, for another shiny hunt. Here you can find wild phantoms. So, we made a ghost type shiny sandwich and got to hunting. And after not too long, like this one right here for a second looks like it. The main thing you want to look at is the cheeks and this shiny phantom right here. <laughs> yes, dude. Let's go. It's so sick. Yes, dude. <laughs> it's so pretty. Oh my god, let's go. We called the shiny phantom Stumps, but with a Z because he's cool. Next up was Kitakami Wilds for our next shiny hunt. Gligar. Oh, there it is! Yes! Yeah, he's so blue! Oh my god! That was so fast. Right, let me try a quick ball first. Let's see if we can get him. Gligor! Come on. Yes. Big pog. Let's go! After capturing Fang, the shiny Gligar, it was time to catch up with Carmine. She tells us that to finish fixing the mask, we need some crystal clusters from a place called the Crystal Pool, at the top of Oni Mountain. On our way up the mountain, we enter a new place called the Infernal Pass, where we can start our next shiny hunt. So, we make a fire type sandwich, and after a little bit of hunting, and that's what leads me up there. Oh, there it is! <laughs> it's at the steps! <laughs> Dude, that looks so good! It was waiting for me at the steps! Are you it's kidding me? What is going on today? You're not Bro. It is my birthday look. <laughs> it is Please cracked not. today. Oh my god, dude. Yes, dude. <laughs> That's so fast. 
After grabbing Slugma Nuts, we head up the stairs here to enter the Crystal Pool, where Carmine is waiting for us, but not before we start another shiny hunt. There are lots of coffins around this area, and Coffin has a really nice shiny. So, we made a poison type sandwich with some noodles and got to work. Oh my god, do you know what the, the little bits of music remind me of here? Not like the singing and stuff. Oh. I love how I'm trying to talk about it, you know, and it's thundering and lightning and you can barely hear it. I don't know how many people will get this. When you had a PS2 and you just sat at the main menu, like before you loaded up a game, it sounds like the atmosphere from the PS2. I've been thinking for ages, I'm like, what does this sound like to me? You just... Oh, there's the shiny as well! Yes! Oh my god, I'm gonna call it PS2. <laughs> Yes! Don't explore, don't explore, don't explore, don't explore. Please capture, 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 capture. No, dude! Let's go! Crit! Nice! Oh my god! After capturing PS2, the shiny coffin, we only had one more area left to shiny hunt. So before continuing the story, I decided to go and hunt the final shiny. And oh my god, the game defo wanted me to wait for this one. To be fair, a lot of the shinies already had taken me no time at all. But inside the mountain here in the chilling waterhead, it had me do not one, not two, but four shiny sandwiches. That's about two hours worth of shiny hunting. Still, for shiny hunting, it's not bad, but when most of the shinies were taking us less than half an hour, we really felt this one. In this cave, we could find Mayimfu, a super nice blue shiny. So, after a bunch of hunting... Oh, there it is! Yes! Finally, dude! Oh, that stands out a mile away. Look at it. Yes! Finally, you took so long to appear. Oh my god, buddies are stopping me. No! I want my Mia cat. <gasps> did they disappear because of the battle? Or did they disappear because... Oh, thank god for that. Holy crap, dude. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Oh, give me a scur for a second then. <laughs> oh my god, I thought it was like gone, gone. <laughs> Yo, thank you, Holy. Yeah, it's such a nice shiny, right? Such a nice shiny. Well, the rest of the DLC we need to do. There it is, we got our simples. Our little meerkat. Yes. Now that we had all of our shiny Pokemon, it was time for the most interesting parts of the story, which we now get to do with a full shiny Pokemon team. We get back to the Crystal Pool to meet Carmine, and suddenly the ground starts to shake and out jumps a wild Milotic. As a purr, me and Carmine double battle Milotic and make quick work of it. We notice that it drops a Crystal Cluster. We head back to Carmine's grandpa's house to hand it to him, and he tells us that Kieran has actually ran off with the Teal Mask to the Loyalty Plaza. So, we chased after him. When we arrive, he challenges us to a battle, so we can try and prove his strength. But, as we did before, we wipe out his entire team. He gets well angry and punches a wall before giving the teal mask back to us and running off again. As he leaves, the statues of the loyal three began to shine. Oh god. What the hell? Banjo and Kazooie showed up? Oh, bingo, bingo. What is going on? <laughs> I'm so confused. Wait, they just left. So after some casual resurrection, which is never explained by the way, if anyone knows the reason, please let me know. But I'm pretty sure they just decide, right boys, it's time to be alive again. They head off to the Kitakami Hall. So we travel there to track them down. Once we arrive, the caretaker and villagers are all excited saying that they met them and gave them powerful food and that they picked up the shining masks. Like it was just an Amazon package that they left ages ago or something. It's pretty funny having just me and Carmine being the only ones who know the true nature of the loyal three. We hurried to the dreaded den to check up on Ogapon, and as we got there... Oh. After confronting them, Mojo Jojo decides to step up and battle us. It wipes a couple of team members, but after some time, we defeat him. After scurrying the three away, we gave the teal mask back to Ogapon, and Carmine decided that we should become the Mask Retrieval Squad. Ogapon joined us in order to keep it safe, and then we went back to the village to ask about any information of where the loyal three could have ran off to. After talking to the local villagers, we regroup to discover each location of the loyal three. Kieran then decides he's not coming with us because he's a little bitch, so it's up to me and Carmine to take down each member. First up, 
Monkey Dory. When we arrived, King Kong was already on the scene. The food that the villagers had gave him had increased their size dramatically. We challenged it to a battle. Monkey Dory was poison and psychic. Luckily for us, Carmine comes to help out with the battles, and together, we take down the first of the loyal three and retrieve the first mask. Next up is Flamingo Wingo. After some battling, we figure out that it's poison and furry, and we took it down. The second mask had been retrieved. The final of the Loyal Three was located at Paradise Barrens. Clifford the Big Dead Dog is what he's about to be, is a poison and fighting type. All of the Loyal Three had the poison type because they're all toxic AF and just straight up dicks. And now that I think about it, it's what Monkey Dory actually looks like. After some battling, we take it out and grab the final mask. After the battle, Kieran finds us and tells us that we need to bring Ogre Pond to the village. And once we arrive, everyone is waiting for us. Turns out Kieran had told them the real story about how Ogre Pond was the innocent one in all of this and they apologise to it. Ogapon is allowed to visit the village whenever it wants. It was time to take Ogapon home to the dreaded den, so me, Carmine and Kieran head up the mountain to escort it home. As we are saying goodbye, it turns out Ogapon wants to stay with us, and before we have a chance to say yes, Kieran chimes in with a haven't you people ever heard of, wait, no, sorry, he wants the ogre for himself, sorry, it's just the her. He wants one final battle to prove that he's in fact strong enough to look after Ogapon. So, we level up our Pokemon to match his and take him on in one final battle. Look right. Kieran's stronger than the champion of Paldea. And I'm not talking about me. Hey, let's go, Mystic. Nice. Oh, the flip. <laughs> if I miss a fire blast, I'm leaving. Oh, oh it was close combat. Wait, no, did I even attack? I'm so confused. Did I even attack? I don't think I got a chance to attack, right? Thank you. After defeating Kieran, we can now capture Ogapom. But before we can just lob a ball at it, we enter a battle, and here's what happens. Let's go! Oh, so I can't just lob a quick ball at it? Jesus. Ivy Kudge? Holy crap. I play Pokemon Scarlet. Oh, my HP is restored as well. That's cool. For a second, I didn't think it let me use the potion. I was like, hang on. So close. Hmm. Oh, and it changes the colors. Oh, that's sick. Oh, this is cool, dude. I like this a lot. So this is probably going to kill me now. I'd see it looking out during the battle. Holy! What is this? Maybe steel? Oh, it's still super effective. Yeah, yeah, so, so. I know the actual teal mass. Dipling coming through. I will start a shiny Pokemon. Catch. What do I put it in? I've got no nice Pokeballs. 
I'm just gonna put it in a Premier Ball. Ladies. I had no nice Pokeballs ready for that. We capture Orgapon and Kieran runs off crying for the millionth time. It was time to head home. We sleep until the next day and awaken to find a message from Carmine waiting for us. She's at the Loyalty Plaza. Maybe Kieran was the Ogre we met along the way. Once we meet Carmine, she asks us to battle one final time with Ogapon. Now, because this fight has to have it on the team and it's not as shiny, we agree that we'll put it on the team, but not use him. If he wasn't shiny locked, we might be able to use him. We begin our final battle of the DLC against Carmine. A character who at first, I really hated, but the more time we spent together working out how to find the masks, defeat the loyal three and save Ogapon, I really started to look up to her because she's tall. We used our shiny Pokemon that we found across the Kitakami region to defeat her once and for all. After the battle, Carmine is about to open up and tell us something, but she is interrupted by Briar calling us that it's time to go home. We head back to Kitakami Hall for the final time to say our goodbyes. Carmine tells us to come visit the Blueberry Academy soon, which is leading into the next part of the DLC. Kieran is nowhere to be found after the goodbyes are done, and we are met with one final cutscene of Kieran. Maybe press that button on your neck and it might help you out. After wrapping up our time in Kitakami, only one more place needed to be visited. The Blueberry Academy in the second DLC, The Indigo Disc. Loading back into the game, I met with a phone call from Director Clavel, asking if I know of the Blueberry Academy that is located in Unova. He explains that due to my experience in Kitakami, they wanted to take us on as an exchange student. And speaking of Kitakami, to make sure we have shiny Pokemon with us from the very start, we will be bringing back two familiar faces. Dipsy, the shiny Diplin, and PGG Tips, the shiny Sinister. This is just in case of any early battles before we can obtain some brand new shiny Pokemon. Making our way over to the school, we are met with Colonel Sanders here, who explains that our lanky friend Carmine has recommended us to join the Academy. And after a sick hat flip, off we go to the Unova region, and the title screen appears. With this game, more like Area Zero frames, am I right? As we arrive, we see the building up above, which appears to have two large blue spheres on top of it. This is probably to represent Game Freak blue balling the hell out of us by shiny locking the legendaries. Here we meet Lacey, who happens to to have a red hand. Don't worry, I'd also be punching the wall if I was named Lacey. It's Lacey's job to take us on a tour of Blueberry Academy. They explain that Lacey is part of the Elite Four in the Lee Club here, and everybody at the Academy takes part in double battles. This is very cool, it gives me proper Pokemon Coliseum vibes. Lacey challenges us to our very first double battle, using Plusal and Minin, and later an Excadrill. But unfortunately for her, our shiny Kitakami Pokemon wipe the floor with her. We get given a brand new uniform and head into the Terrarium for the very first time. Serrano says this whole Terrarium wasn't cheap, but honestly, I would have paid more if my textures were disappearing like that. There are four main biomes within the Terrarium. Savannah, Coastal, Canyon, and Polar. We choose to explore the Savannah biome first. A notification goes off to announce that a class has started in the Coastal biome, and Lacey asks us to meet her there later on. We will do Lacey, but first, we have shiny Pokemon to find. Now, my plan for this DLC is to find two shiny Pokemon for each event that happens within the story. With the DLC focusing around double battles, I think it'd be super cool to show off as many shiny shinies as we can. So, off I go to start my first shiny hunt. After some searching around the area for a target, I spot what I want. A trap inch. So we make a ground type sandwich and begin the first shiny hunt of the DLC. And after some time... <gasps> there it is! Yes, dude! Oh, it's the trap inch as well! Oh my god! My first shiny! Oh, dude, trap inch is an amazing shiny. Look at that! Level 63, holy crap. Right, let's try... I'm going to put it in a quick ball. Yeah, I'll try that if this doesn't work. There it is! The first shiny of the Indigo Disc. Little blue trap inch. I can't believe I'm going to be able to get a friggin' shiny Flygon. That's huge. I don't know. Lil P. I'm not calling her Lil P. She's a P. She's not a P. What do you mean? P She's blue. Pod. Is it blue? It is blue, yes. Trap inch has always been blue. Yes, it's blue. It's bluer than my balls. <laughs>
For a nickname, we named her Babe. When fully evolved, Flygon's eyes remind me of the character Abe Sapien from Hellboy. And because it's a girl, this is Babe Sapien. And our first shiny of the Indigo disc. You know what that means? She needs a doubles partner. Exploring the area some more, I came across one of my favorite Gen 5 Pokemon, Zeb Striker. Oh my god, Blitzley's literally here. We're doing it. So after setting up an electric type sandwich, it was time to find a zebra. And one thing that I've not mentioned yet is the music in this DLC. Hearing Gen 5 music again was so good. I think that's it. Oh, <gasps> no way. Another blue shiny. Look at how sick that yellow is when it lights up. Oh my God. Ah, oh, yes, the electric zebra. And it's a male, so I can call it Marty. Let's put it, put it in a dive ball if I can. Maybe this one would have worked better in a quick ball, actually. If it goes like blue and yellow. Oh my god, that did so much damage. There we go. Yeah, that's literally a perfect Pokemon for the quick ball. Oh, I love how I got the Trapinch and the Blitzlow, not the evolved forms. And there we go, it's called Marty from Madagascar. Now this DLC is a lot, lot harder than any others that I've played before. So, in order to be ready for the challenges up ahead, we had to make sure that the Pokemon were going to be as strong as possible. So that means it's evolving time. Alright, Blitzel's going to be first to evolve. Let's see what shiny Zeb Striker looks like. Oh my god, that looks so clean. You missed the, the light up. It evolved and I went yellow as well. Oh, that's so, so cool. Jeez. That is sick. Here we go, Bib's first evolution. Oh, that Vibrava actually looks sick, like the orange. Vibration Pokemon, ayo. Hey, Here we go, we're about to have Shiny Flygon. Bib Sapien. Oh my god, it looks so cool, <laughs> dude. Oh my god. So, we had two fully evolved shiny Pokemon. I put PGG tips away for now. And as for Diplin, he'll be sticking around for a while, and you'll see why later. But now it was time to go meet Lacey for the class in the coastal biome. When we get there, the class has already begun. We are given the task to catch and bring back any Alolan form Pokemon we can find. And then it hits me. Oh my god, I'm gonna do a shiny one. I'm gonna do a shiny one. So after exploring the area, I find my favorite Alolan form. <gasps> oh my god, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm getting a shiny Alolan Exeggutor. Alolan Exeggutor, and luckily it has a unique type in that none of the Pokemon around here have, Dragon. So we whip up a Dragon type sandwich and get to work. Oh, oh my god, <coughs> I breathed in too much, there it is. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, it's in one of the groups so I can see how much it stands out. Look at it, so happy. Oh, that is sick. Alright, let's do this. I found the tall boy. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, it's tall girl. Oh my god, I can't even see it. Try a quick ball, just in case. I thought the others were part of the battle for a second then. That's good, man. Um, do you mind? We're trying to have a battle here. <laughs> I can't I can't see the shiny. This guy's freaking out. Bro, move your neck. I've never had to tell someone to move the neck before. There we go. I got a shiny Alolan Exeggutor. I can't wait to show him that. I know exactly what I'm calling it as well. I have the best name. <laughs> I'm naming it Egg Egg and Eggy. <laughs> and and for, for anyone wondering, the tail is called Egbert. Egg Egg and Eggy. <laughs> it's so dark. <laughs> it's the best it name. What so do you want? <laughs> it is the best name. <laughs> Egg Egg and Eggy had joined the team. Unfortunately, there was no secret dialogue for showing off a shiny Alolan form, but come on, that's pretty sweet. Three shinies in already. As the class is being dismissed, Lacey tells us about Blueberry Quests, or BBQs for short. Well, it beats STDs and Legends Arceus, so it's one step forward. So, we had four shinies on the team, with Alolan Exeggutor being the newest. And speaking of Alolan Exeggutor, I just got a phone call from one. It's Carmine asking us to meet her. When we arrive, she challenges us to a battle, and after a little bit of a struggle against her teared up cup of tea, we managed to defeat her. After the battle, she asks if we have seen Kieran, and then shouting can be heard. We hurry over to see Kieran with a brand new look, kicking off at a nearby trainer. Bro must be going through puberty because his emotions are all over the place. Suddenly we are called for from behind. Holy crap, it's Captain Aquafresh! Turns out he's one of the Elite Four, and he takes us to a place called the League Club. Here we can use BP from BBQs to unlock special things within the Terrarium, and then the dude must have a couple of Rizberries on him because he asks to take us on a date at the cafeteria, and Carmine flips 
out. Here we meet the rest of the Elite Four and catch up with Kieran. McFlurry explains that he wants us to join the Beyblade League, and in order to decide, they take a vote, with Kieran being the deciding vote. So off we go to get signed up to take on the BB League. Once we are signed up, Kieran warns us not to lose to a single person, and goes full on Volo Jr. mode. Alright dude, calm down, remember, not even an ogre wanted to pick you. Our map is updated to show the Elite Four in each biome. Perfect, now we have the plan. Hunt two shiny Pokemon before every Elite Four member, and seeing as though we already hunted two Pokemon in the Savannah biome, it was time to take on the first member, Graydon Ramsey. So we paid 50 BP to enter the trial before the fight, and I couldn't think of anything worse. Crispin, which I still can't believe is his real name, asks us to make him the spiciest sandwich that we possibly can. But the only way to get the ingredients is by trading with the trainers around. That means we have to build up what we need to make the sandwich. Like I said, this is the worst for me, because I can't even handle chili heatwave Doritos. Never mind a super spicy sandwich. Also, can we just talk about these NPCs and the puns that they make? Because, oh my god. I know I make a lot of horrible jokes in these shiny onlys, but the puns they come out with? I wasn't bready. Anyway, whoever made this trial must be an idiot sandwich, because in no time at all, it was time to battle Crispin. Also, I gotta point out that I didn't add the top bun during this task, and he actually acknowledged it, asking if it was some weird Paladean thing. But, on to the battle. And guys, guys, this battle, I know he's a chef and makes a lot of food and goes out to places to sell it at his stalls, but the stall he had me in during this battle, this executor right here, it has Harvest as its ability, right? Which means it basically has infinite citrus berries. It also leech seeded my mons, so all it was doing was regaining health. His other Pokemon, I took out just fine. You wanna know how long it took me to do this battle? 25 minutes. I've heard of let him cook, but holy balls. I could have watched almost a whole episode of Kitchen Nightmares during this battle, and that's exactly what it was, a nightmare. This gameplay right here is 1000% sped up. Look at this crap. Anyway, we are taking down the first of the Elite Four. Get me back to shiny hunting right now. The next area was the canyon biome, and after some searching around, I found a Pokemon to hunt, Tyrog. Now I'm one of those players who always forgets what Tyrog will evolve into, depending on certain stats and what star sign he is and crap like that. So it's always fun to evolve it because it feels like a randomizer. And also, Tyrog is a sick shiny. Oh, there it is. Finally. Oh my god, dude. Damn, look at his little blue shorts. There we go. I caught him. Oh my god, as if I finally found that. Jeez. Oh, wait, well, I guess he is going to change, though. We'll have to see what he evolves into. Alright, I think he's going to become a Hitmonchan. Ooh! Let's go! I always thought Hitmonchan's head looks like McDonald's fries when they're in the pack. Groot, oh my god. I am Brute. <laughs> <laughs> I am Brute is our newest shiny Pokemon for the team, and the first one to be found in the canyon biome. Now while I was searching for the best spot to hunt Tyrog, I found the best Pokemon to hunt for next. One of my favourite things of all time is dinosaurs. I loved reading about them growing up, and my favourite film of all time is Jurassic Park. So when I got to the top of this mountain and found Wild Kranidos, you know I had to hunt it. No, it was still day one for the DLC, and I was hunting until 7am. So, I got some rest and jumped on a few hours later, and two minutes into the next session, this happened. Oh my god, that looks so nice. Dude. Oh my god. So when I was hunting this earlier on, it was seven o'clock in the morning. I've just started fresh today. As if two minutes in, two minutes in. Where were you last night? You took so long, Kranidos, but there it is. Oh my God, it looks amazing, dude. It looks so good. Oh, I'm so happy that shines so fast today. Boom, one quick ball. Don't even care that I'm putting stuff in quick balls. It is what it is, at least they're getting captured. Oh man, hell yeah. I love shiny Kranidos. The fact that we can hunt a fossil in the old world is so cool. I'm gonna call it Alpha. I think that'll be a cool name. Yes, dude, look at it. What moves does it know? Ancient power, Zen headbutt. What is it, attack heavy. Oh my God, it is just all attack. Holy. Here we go. We're about to have a friggin' shiny Rampados, dude. One last look at Kranidos. Oh my God, his model looks so sick, dude. Bro, that looks sick. Oh my god. Oh, the fact that I've literally, it's felt like hunting in Jurassic Park. This has been my favourite hunt in the DLC so far, for sure. 
after capturing Alpha, I made my way to the next gym trial with Amaris. Now, before we get into the trial, I just want to point out that she kept calling Coridon Agius, which is his Pokemon cry, right? Unless I'm missing something here. It's like if I threw out a victory bell and she went, ah, yes, that's your... <laughs> So, this trial, this lets us fully control flight with Coridon. And I don't know about you guys, but to me, this is like getting the running shoes at the post pause game. We don't even get the whole thing right away. But I did enjoy this trial. It reminded me of the flight levels on Spiral the Dragon when I was a kid. And speaking of a drag, oh my god, lighten up Amaris. Always checking schedules and keeping an eye on your watch. Well, it's time for you to watch me destroy your team. She uses mainly steel Pokemon, which I can deal with pretty easily. With this being the quickest and fastest of the Elite Four matches I had. Two down down, two to go. On to the next biome, the coastal biome. Now even though I already found a Alolan Exeggutor here, I wasn't counting her as part of the two that I needed from the biome, as she was part of a challenge. So, I went to track down my next shiny hunt. If you're familiar with any of my shiny hunts from the past, you'll know that I love going for the shiny regional birds, and the one I find a lot is usually Starly. However, there is one in this DLC that I've not seen in quite some time, Peaky Peck. And I think we haven't seen it in quite some time because holy crap, how are you supposed to? Look at the size of it. Wait. Oh, that's it! Oh my god! My eyes are killing. <laughs> my eyes are killing this. Look at how small it is! And look at the difference between the ones. Oh my god, I was mainly looking for the eye. Jeez, dude. Holy. Oh my god, thank you for the crit capture. I will happily take that. No, it wasn't too bad. That was the third sandwich, but it was just how small they are in the grass is ridiculous. There it is, our shiny Peaky Pack. I have not seen one of these since Alola, that's wild. This was my first SOS shiny. Um, that was a brand new Gen 7 Mon at the time. That's cool. It's nice to have it back. Let's check it out. It is time to evolve this little bird twice. Oh, it is, it is a nice shiny to be fair. It's not a massive difference, but it is nice. But this is where things get spicy. Look at that, that's so much nicer. God, yeah, I've not had a two cannon since my first Sun and Moon playthrough. And there it is. Oh man, that is cool. Fruit Loops. Now, we already had one form from this biome, so why not one more? Here on this beach, you can isolate Galarian Slowpoke with a Psychic-type sandwich. There it is! Yes! Oh, the pure gold Galarian Slowpoke, man. I love how I've got two forms, and they're both, like, golden. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I never did get a Galarian Slowpoke, so having this and being able to get the evolutions, because remember when the evolutions were like locked? So let's do this. I actually don't know how to evolve it either, so I'm gonna have to learn about that. Nice, an awesome golden shiny Slowpoke, but how do we evolve it? Well, turns out on the beach I was hunting, there are items called Galarica Twigs. And if you take a certain amount to the NPC next to the Coastal Plaza, you can decide which item you want to evolve your Slowpoke. So we went with the Galarica Reef for Galarian Slowking. There it is. Oh my God, it's evolving on here. <laughs> I don't even know which one this makes it. I just, I just chose one at random. There it is, dude. Yo, shiny Galarian Slawking. And then finally, I'm gonna call her Pants, because I always call Slawking Pants. Next up was Lacey's Trial, and it was a Pokemon quiz. The quiz would ask us questions about certain Pokemon, and we would have to choose the right part of the Pokemon's body to answer correctly. Like this one, for example. Where does Pikachu store its electricity? I know the answer is Cheeks, but I wanted to select his Ash Cheeks instead. Now, I won't lie, this next battle was difficult. So difficult that I actually failed the first time around. Lacey uses Furry-type Pokemon, a type in that I've always struggled with, and it doesn't help that most of my Mons are weak to Furry. The best strat that I had for this was to use Thunder Wave with Marty, and until everything was paralyzed and I slowly chipped away at the health. Three Elite Four members down, almost time for the final against Colgate. Entering the final biome, the Polar Biome. I had no idea what I wanted to hunt here. I wasn't really feeling an ice type at first, but then I saw it. Lapras. I'll always remember reading the wholesome story of the guy who as a kid played Pokemon Crystal and read the Pokedex description of Lapras and how they were almost extinct. So he went to the daycare, bred a bunch of them and released them into the wild. Here they are, dude. You saved them and I'm about to hunt a shiny one. 
Oh my god, there it is. Yo, that looks so sick and that was so fast. Oh my god, that was less than five minutes on this sandwich. Bro, I friggin' love shiny Lapras. Let's do this. Oh my god, it is slow as balls right now. Look at that. Holy crap. Dude, it looks so nice. One quick ball, there we go. Easy shiny Lapras, hell yeah. Bro, it's so slow right now, Jesus Christ. Lag Lake the sequel. Watch this book. Look at that. <laughs> That's so cool though. Ice Beam, Rain Dance, Hydro Pump and Perish song. We named her Nessie and continued on to find our next shiny. I've had some insane luck so far with quick hunts. Awesome shinies found and I'm just overall in a great mood. Nothing can bring me down right now, so while I'm in a great mood, I want to find a great shiny. Since the Indigo disc was first announced, they showed a couple of Pokemon that would be available in the DLC way before any trailer or information. One I've had my eye on for the longest time is Shiny Metagross. Oh my god. No way. Shiny Matang. What? Yo, that's sick, dude. I really thought I'd get the Beldum because there's few Matang spawning, but oh my god. That looks sick. Oh, I'm so glad they put this Pokemon in the DLC. Oh, dude, I cannot wait to get a Shiny Metagross. It is going to be sick. This is going to be a difficult capture. With that not capturing straight away. Right, let's... Thunder wave it. I thought it was going to be hard to notice because a lot of the Beldums blend in with the snow and they look like they're shiny colours, but Matang stood out like crazy. Please don't do a lot. Are you kidding me? Uh oh, oh no, dude. Are you kidding me? Oh, I've not failed a shiny in so long. I was like, yeah, there's no way a, a thunderbolt, thundershock, whatever kills it. Oh, dude, you are kidding. No, it was Matang as well. Oh, no. <laughs> That happened so fast as well. Look, I found it in like seven minutes, dude. <laughs> oh no. What? Like, I know I'm like a, a much higher level, but I really thought it would survive that. Holy crap. Well, I bet I'm going to get punished for this now. Oh my god, is that... No! <laughs> oh my god, it's been a minute! <laughs> dude! Another Matang? Oh my god, I'm so lucky. Oh my god, I'm actually so lucky. Okay. <laughs> the quick ball. Come on, please. <laughs> There's no way, dude. Oh my god, no. Right, I've got to be very careful, very careful, very careful. I'm only Thunder Wave <laughs> this time. I'm doing nothing else. Holy... Jeez, I am so lucky. It is ridiculous. Oh, that was less than a minute to find that. Holy crap. Oh, bro, I'm so happy. That could have punished me like crazy. Like, that did not need to appear for like two hours if it wanted to. Right, I don't... I know Beldum normally gets takedown. I don't know if Matang will have it. I don't even know what I've got to attack it because I'm so scared of even touching a move now. Let's go! Yes, dude! Oh my god, I'm so happy. Like, I've not failed a shiny in so long, and to claim it in less than a minute, jeez. Oh my god, I thought I was going to get punished. I feel like something's going to happen. <laughs> something's going to punish me in the future for fainting that shiny Matang. But there we go, we got one. This was my main target ever since they first showed, like, the four Pokemon that were going to be in the Indigo disc. And we finally got it. Let's have a look at it. It's got a mark. Ferocious mark. What? Matang the Rampaging. Dude. <laughs> what? I don't know how rare that is, but that's cool. All right, here we go. This is the moment I've been waiting for. 
ever since Indigo Disc was announced, I always said I wanted a shiny Metagross. And there it is. That is one of the nicest shiny Pokemon I've ever seen. Oh my god, dude. I'm still so stressed from that fail. <laughs> oh my god. Alright, after seeing it back, maybe using a stab move of a Pokemon 30 levels higher wasn't a good idea, but Shiny Metagross was finally on the team, and we named him after my good friend, Krypton. Moving on to the Polar Plaza, as I arrived, I realised I had zero BP to my name, and needed 50 to challenge Mr. Whippy. So, off I went to do a few BBQs, like auto battling 10 different Pokemon. After claiming the points, I came back to get told I can just get him for free. Are you kidding me? So for Captain Aquafresh's trial, we had to fight three other trainers using only Pokemon caught here in the Terrarium. So I'm really happy that I've been doing this shiny only as my team was good to go. And my newest members of Krypton and Nessie won these battles super fast, taking me straight to the final Elite Four battle. Honestly, everything up until these last two Pokemon were a breeze. His Pokemon are all Dragon type, which I had a lot of good counters for, and with Ice Beam on Nessie, taking out most of his team was super easy. But then came Kingdra and Dragon Terra Archaladon, the brand new evolution of Duraladon. And these two as a pair have a very interesting strat. Archaladon has the move Electro Shock, a move that takes two turns to use. It charges up its power and boosts its special attack on the first turn, and on the second turn, it releases the attack. But because Kingdra had the Rain Dance going on, Electro Shock fires immediately. So you're probably thinking, how did Joey win this one? Well, I'm not proud of it, but I just used Perish Song with Lapras and they both died after three turns. But hey, a win is a win, and we had defeated the BB Elite Four. We were now able to take on Kieran for a battle for champion, but before we do that, I want to get two more shiny Pokemon. And after seeing that Chaladon, I want a shiny one. So I went off to hunt a shiny Asper inhaler. Is that it? I think this is it. Let's go! It's like the slightest difference ever. But we got a shiny Duraladon, and that means we can get the newest shiny. Archaladon, whatever it's called. It's, it's just a bridge. <laughs> it's just a bridge. Let's go! Easy! Nice. All right, now I've got to figure out how the hell I evolved this thing. So to evolve Duraladon, you need 300 BP to buy an item from the BB League shop called Metal Alloy. All right, here we go. Brand new shiny Pokemon. What does the bridge Pokemon look like? Oh, yo, that's actually clean. What? I was not expecting that kind of blue. Yo, I really like that, actually. All right, we need to think of a name. I want to give it... Nickname of like a famous bridge or something. Electro shot? Yeah, that was OP. We named it Brooklyn, which is a perfect name for it. Now it's time to hunt one last shiny Pokemon before fighting Kieran. And this is where Dipsy comes back. This DLC didn't just bring in evolution for Duraladon, but it also brought one for Diplin. But in order to evolve it, we needed the TM Dragon Shear, which we obtained from beating Oral B. All right, here we go. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, yo, that's sick. That's super cool. Hydrapple. I love how it keeps the same shiny colors as well. Yeah. All right, we're ready to fight Kieran. All right, Kieran, you've been talking a big game for all of this DLC, calling out people for losing and just being a general dickhead. So let's see what you're made of. So taking the idea from the last battle, I put Nessie and Brooklyn up front to set up Rain Dance to have Brooklyn fully use Electro Shot. But Kieran threw out a Polychord, which used Drizzle, which already made it rain, so we're already set up there. Both his Polychord and Dragonite were weak to moves that I used with Nessie and Brooklyn. Next up, he had Incineroar and Grimmsnarl. Incineroar was taken out by a single head smash from Alpha. At this point, Brooklyn was powered up and easily took out Grimmsnarl. I then brought in Dipsy, and to my surprise, Kieran also threw out his own Hydrapple. I Dragon Terrored mine, and he Fighting Terrored his, but... It was too late for little baby Kieran. I won. And to be fair, Kieran ended up being the easiest fight of the league, so how anyone lost to him is a mystery to me. But before we can even fully celebrate being champion, me, Carmine, Kieran, and Drayton get called to see Miss Briar. When we arrive, Miss Briar tells us that she finally got permission to check out Area Zero and wants to locate the Pokemon Terrapoggers, as it might have something to do with terrestrialization. Suddenly, Gita and Rika appear, asking which of us will be going to Area Zero to help with the exhibition. Me, Carmine, and Kieran decide to go. 
with Kieran fixating on Terrapog as being a legendary Pokemon. Just before we leave, Geeta hands us the Indigo disc out of nowhere, and we arrive at Area Zero. Once here, Miss Briar tells us the same thing she did to Jacques the first time they met. We must go deeper. We head to the gate and place the Indigo disc into the CD drive and enter. Taking the same elevator we took with Professor Mummy Sada all that time ago, we get brought to an entire new section of Area Zero. There are notes left behind by Sada which explain of a brand new terror type called Stella, and then we come across a Glamora, but this one is sparkling with terror energy. We enter the battle with it, and instead of it having just one type of terror, it has every type surrounding its head. This Glamora was Stella type. We defeat it, and the crystals blocking our path disappear, and we head deeper inside. We come across more Stella Pokemon like Noivern, Sandy Shocks, and Garganicle. Defeat them and make our way to the deepest part of Area Zero. Kieran spots the hidden treasure attached to the crystals and begins pulling on it. With how lonely he's been, he's probably used to doing that. He rips it off the crystal and it goes flying to the ground before rising in the air and sparkling. Out pops Terra Poggers. The first thing its little turtle eyes see is us. So it begins to walk over to us, but Kieran pulls out his Master Ball and throws it towards the Pokemon and captures it. He thinks having this will make him more powerful and then challenges us to fight it. We wipe it out in a few hits. Not so strong for a legendary Pokemon, but then Miss Briar makes a good point. Why don't we try terrestrializing the Pokemon? The Pokemon begins an insane transformation, taking in a crazy amount of terror energy. Kieran tries putting it back into the Master Ball and it destroys it. He's the only trainer in existence to fail using a Master Ball. Terra Poggers was now officially the hidden treasure of Area Zero, and we had to defeat it by terrestrializing our Pokemon. Surely but surely, we took down its HP, and Kieran even decided to help us once we had done most of the work. Honestly, Kieran, it's wild that even though you were the first person to own a stellar Pokemon, you are still nobody's type. But finally, we delivered the final blow and captured Terra Poggers. Everyone had a good cry and we returned back to Blueberry Academy. Kieran apologised and had seen the error of his ways and we became friends again. But there was one last thing to do. Wrap up the story of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. With Terra Poggers in the party, we head on over to Kitakami, specifically the Crystal Pool. Once here, it emits a powerful energy and right there in front of us is the real Professor Sada. She begins talking to us and explains that Coridon's name to her is the Winged King, which is his power Paradox name. In this moment, she is no longer connected to her own timeline, which gives us a chance to speak to each other and ask questions. This version of Sada had yet to go into the past to bring Pokemon to the present, and she briefly mentions having a son, referring to Arvin. She then asks us some questions about where we are, how we met Coridon, and then finally a book that we got from Miss Briar that she wrote, titled The Hidden Treasure of Area Zero. She says that she must study this book and offers us an exchange for her original Scarlet book. We make the trade, and Sada disappears. And we are transported back to the title screen of the game. And that is the whole of Pokemon Scarlet, but I can only use shiny Pokemon.